This tutorial covers subsetting an X-ray data set by time and space. X-ray creates labelled coordinate indices for CF compliant data. This makes selecting subsets of the data in time and space straightforward. This tutorial covers some of the common usage patterns for subsetting data. The first step is to reload the library and the data set we were using in the previous notebook and then we'll select just the data value TAS, TAS and save a reference to it in another Python variable. So once again this is monthly air, near surface air temperature with a range of values from 1850 to 2005. X-Ray builds on top of NumPy and stores its data internally as NumPy arrays. It supports many NumPy operations, so it's possible to find out the shape of the underlying data and use NumPy style indexing, like so. So, test.shape, and which is a NumPy operator. And if we select out the first index, which is 0 for Python, and that's the time index because it's the first one, the rest of them, well, we want all the dimensions, so we just use the placeholder of the colon. And now you can see it's returned a data array that is just just has latitude and longitude longitude in its dimensions. Time is still in the coordinates down here, but you can but it's a single value, which is the value that we've selected, and no longer has an asterisk beside it to, which shows that it's no longer used in any data variable. So that index selection we just did is equivalent to using iCell, which is an X-Array operator, like so. So TAS iCell time equals zero. So this is a keyword argument. Specify the dimension and the index required. Note that the, the dimension name isn't quoted in this case. That can be a little bit confusing. Sometimes you do have to quote dimension names for some operators just depending on how it's being used. In this case, not. So we just evaluate that and we get the same result. TAS, just with latitude and longitude, and time is no longer a dimension, just a single value. So that is equivalent to that. That is equivalent. One is more descriptive. Probably iCell is the better one to use in general. The power of X-ray comes with the close association of data with coordinates, so it's possible to use an equivalent dot cell, not iCell, but dot cell operator with coordinate values. So for example, to select an area that includes the Indian Ocean and Australia, we can use a slice to indicate the range of latitude and longitude values required and pass those as key value pairs to cell. So this is a cell operator, so LON is our longitude dimension, and we want a slice from 20 up to 160, and latitude, as in lat dimension, slice from minus 80 to 25. If we do that, we can see we now have, we haven't sliced at all in time, so we still have all the time values, but now the latitude dimension and the longitude dimensions are much smaller. Operators like this can be chained, well, pretty much every operator, so multiple operations can be, form, be performed sequentially. So for example, to select the above area and the first time index, we can we use an I cell and a cell, I cell time equals zero, and then cell latitude and longitude. If we do that, now we have, it returns a data array with the smaller latitude longitude dimensions is above, but no time dimension. Time is just a coordinate down here. So that's the equivalent of both those operations at once. In this case, it's convenient to use iCell to select the time because it's easy just to specify a single digit, but uh, it's also possible, possible to specify the date explicitly using cell. So in this case, we use dot cell, and it's just one operator this time because we're specifying all three in, in the one operator. So time now, we're going to specify the very first time step as a date time. And the, the same longitude and latitude slices we did before. 
So if we go ahead, here we go, and now that should be the same as above. The smaller latitude and longitude, a single time dimension, a single time, time is coordinate, but just a single value, so it's not one of the dimensions of TAS. It's also possible to use slice for the time dimension. So to select March to November of 1871, we use cell, time, and here we, we're specifying the, the lower bound and the upper bound of the time using a slice. And also still specifying the latitude and longitude slices we had before. And now we have a dimension Time has a dimensionality of 9, which is the 9 months that we wanted, and the smaller lat latitude and longitude direct dimensions in this data array that's returned. And we can see here when X array displays the coordinates, it usually displays just a few values from the beginning and the end, which can be helpful. In this case, we can see that time starts at March and ends in November as we wanted. Um, the day is the 16th, it's just those are the midpoints of the month. The slice operator selects values between an upper and a lower bound. If a single coordinate value is required when using cell, it must either correspond to an exact value in the coordinate array, or the method argument must be specified to tell X-Array how to choose a value. So for example, to select out just values in the cell closest to Brisbane, is at minus 27.47 latitude, 153.03 longitude, we can we specify this nearest method here. So if we evaluate that, we see now we it returns in a data array with all the time values in the original TAS data array, but no, there's no dimensionality in latitude and longitude, and you see latitude and longitude is listed here as single values. Uh, they're still coordinates, but they're not, they're not a dimension of TAS. And you can see the, the actual le closest cell was at minus 27.5 and 153.8, which isn't exactly the same as what we specified up here, but it's obviously the closest.